So we're given a situation where we're trying to decide what's the most economical choice for printing services. Now, in order to do this, you can find the answer just through trial and error methods, and uh, a lot of students have done that in the past. But we also want to make sure that we can apply a mathematical process, which is more of a guarantee of a correct answer. It's a little less, you know, just like, ah, oh, try this, try this, try this. So it, it's, it's a strategy. And what we do is we lay out the information that we're given into some sort of mathematical operation. It says that A plus printing offers a service where it is a $20 service fee and 10 cents per copy after that. Print More offers a setup fee of $55, but only five cents per copy. Now you can look at this and say, okay, before I even make a copy, A plus printing only charges 20 bucks. Print More charges 50. So if I only needed to make a few copies, which one's gonna be the most economical? Well, only having to pay a $20 startup fee uh, is going to be much better if I have a low quantity. But if I have to print a high quantity, the, the copies are cheaper. So I have to find out at what point is one better than the other. I'm not trying to necessarily say one is better than the other. It's trying to have an educated choice of, oh, if I only have a little, this is my option. If I have a lot, this is my option. And to make a concerted like choice of where that breaking point is, I have to set up these two expressions to find out when are the two equal so that I can decide what that, that equal point is, that breaking point, so that anything that falls below this specific number goes to these guys. Anything that goes after that, the second option is better. So we need to set these up as being equivalent. Oops. And whenever we work with money, we make sure that we're representing it in its decimal value. I can't use a 10 for 10 cents because then that would be saying it's $10 because this 20 here is saying $20. So I need its decimal value. And then I can, you can move the whole numbers first and then your variables. I personally like to move my variables in a way that leave my, my number positive. So if I take away five cents from both sides, that still leaves me with a positive five cents per copy. If I had taken away the 10C, then I would have been working with a negative five cents per copy, but it all works out the same in the end. So it's okay, but it's just my preference. My, my goal is to solve for the variable, so that's my focus. That's what I want to start with. And then I take away $20, which leaves me with 35. So that cancels out. So now I have 0.05C equals 35. So at five cents a copy, when I spend $35 on those copies, it's when it breaks even. So how many copies does that take? If I divide by 0 0.05, divide by 0 0.05, five into 35 is seven, and 700 copies. So when I make 700 copies, these two are equal. It doesn't matter. I can choose either one. So if I need to print less than 700, then A plus printing is going to be my best option. If I have to print more than 700, print more is going to be my best option. And this is just the process that you need to go about when trying to decide which is better than the other and at what point is that. So you, you kind of need that dividing point. Um, but if you were maybe graphing this, if, this, if you had graphed your points out because you technically have a y-intercept and a slope, it's saying where your two lines meet. So that anything before that, that's cheaper and now it becomes more expensive. This starts out more expensive but then becomes cheaper. So that's just a visual of it.